everybody. This is Debbie Reynolds with Rocky Mountain Lodge and I am so excited to have you guys here today. We are going to be making some crepes or as the French or other people like to say crepes. Um, so whichever way you prefer to say it, you go ahead and say it crepes or crepes. I'm going to be making three different kinds today We're, or three different versions, actually more than that really. I'm going to be making regular crepes and then when we make our regular crepes, I'm also going to make those into some herbed Asiago eggs in fluted crepe cups. It sounds super fancy and they taste delicious, but you'll see they're not that hard to make. And then I'll be making some chocolate crepes and we'll just do some different variations on all of those crepes today. And today I have a really special helper. I have a special videographer today. I'm going to ask her to turn it around so you can see her. This is my granddaughter, Alyssa. Can you say hi, hi Alyssa? So she, this is her first time, and then you can turn it back around yep. when you're done. Um, this is her first time helping me, so if things aren't quite perfect, just cut her some slack, but I know <laughs> she'll do an excellent job. And she lives right next door. She's the oldest of all of my grandkids. She is 14, almost 15. These girls just grow up way too fast, and so do the boys. I'm sure you can all agree that all of our kids and grandkids grew up way too fast for our likings. Um, and so anyway, so I'm really happy that she's here to help me out because today I have to kind of move from my island to the stove to the oven and back here. And you can kind of see I have a whole bunch of stuff laid out here on the island today to make all kinds of different goodies that we're going to have today. Don't be intimidated because these are several different recipes that we're going to make today, but I wanted to make this video worthwhile. So the first thing that we're going to do today is we're going to start out by making our regular crepes. So we're going to put in here, in our, our bowl, our mixing bowl, we're going to put in two eggs. Alyssa's going to help me out here. I think you can see a lot better when somebody's helping me out. So we've got two eggs in there, and then I have one and a quarter cups of milk that we're going to put in here. And I'm going to set these here. And now I'm going to mix these in the mixer right now. And let me find what I did with my whisk. <laughs> I thought I was all prepared, but not quite. Okay, hold on while I grab a whisk. Actually, I think it's in my dish washing machine. Or not washing machine. <laughs> It's in my dish rack drying because I actually made this batter. You can see right here that I actually made this batter ahead of time. And this is our chocolate crepe batter right here. We have to make those ahead of time and put them in the refrigerator for about an hour ahead of time. It's okay if you don't get them in there an hour ahead of time. You can make it, but they tend to come out better when you make these in advance. And because then the flour will get um, blended with all of the wet ingredients. And Alyssa, let me know if anybody says anything on there. People can comment. Mm -hmm. And so if anybody does, just repeat it to me. Okay. And so everybody that's watching, I'm so glad you tuned in today. Um, don't forget to like this video, share this video, and mark any comments about it and any other recipes that you would like to see me make. So we're going to go ahead and mix this until these are well blended. It doesn't take too long for those. And then, shut that off. And now I have one cup of flour, which I already have sifted. I like to sift my flour because it makes it a little lighter, gets out any clumps that might be in there. And so I'm going to add that flour to here. I'm walking through. I oh, got, I got yes. work to do. <laughs> <laughs> we all know Brian by this time. And then I also have a little pinch of salt that we're going to add to that. And then while this is whisking, I have one tablespoon of melted butter right here. You can kind of see, and then, so what you want to do is it's melted and then it's cooled slightly. You want to let it cool a little bit or else you're going to scramble your eggs, which we don't want to do right now. So you want it to cool a little bit. And sometimes you'll see your butter can separate. That's because there's milk solids in here and they tend to settle to the bottom. That's the way that you end up making clarified butter. If you ever want to make clarified butter, you just um, melt your butter and you let it separate. And then you just use the top portion for the clarified butter and you discard the milk solids that settle on the bottom. But we're just going to go ahead and use the whole thing. So I'm going to slowly turn this on and we're going to slowly drizzle in that butter. 
and get these all incorporated. And I've got a spatula right here. I am going to just scrape these sides down a little bit. And I'm gonna show you this cute little apron that I'm wearing today. My sweet neighbor knows that I, has noticed me wearing aprons all the time. And so this was her mom's apron and I thought it was pretty cool. She ended up giving it to me today and it's one of those old fashioned ones. When I move over to the stove, you'll get to see the whole thing and it's got pockets. I love aprons with pockets, but I just kind of feel like I'm stepping back in time with this apron and I just love it. All right, and we're just gonna let this whisk up. And as I mentioned, while this is whisking, I will show you the batter that I already have done. <laughs> so you can see that this batter is already done. I put it in the refrigerator this morning. I made that one earlier today. You want to keep it in the refrigerator for at least an hour and let those blend. But as I mentioned, if you can't do that, it's okay. Okay, so we're just mixing up this batter for a minute or so until it's all blended. So we're gonna end up with a lot of crepes, but that's not gonna be a problem because I have a whole bunch of kids next door that I don't think you're gonna mind eating all these. <laughs> I might even have Alyssa help me make them once this video is over and put her to work. <laughs> all right, so you can see our batter is done. So all you're gonna do is cover that up, put it in the refrigerator for about an hour, and then you can make it. Hi, Jim Davis, thanks for watching the video while I'm working. <laughs> it's my coworker. <laughs> Okay, that would be my hubby Brian. And then I do want to also mention that you can find all of these recipes, actually not all, but you can find the recipe for these crepes in my cookbook, Rocky Mountain Lodge and Cabin's More Favorite Recipes, which you can find at our website under the gift shop tab. Um, so go ahead and check that out. And if you enter um, Facebook cooking, you can save $5 off the price of that cookbook. And so go ahead and order that up and that will pretty much save for your shipping costs and you'll get that cookbook in the mail. So this recipe that I'm making for these crepes and for the herbed Asiago eggs in fluted crepe cups are in this cookbook. And the chocolate crepes are not in the cookbook. However, I'll put it on the website so that way you can get that recipe. And this recipe is already on my website under my recipes tab so you can find this one there. And I'll have the hazelnut or the chocolate crepes, that's a little prelude to what we're doing a little bit. Um, I'll have the chocolate crepes on there by tomorrow. All right, any questions from anybody, Alyssa? No, no. but there is someone who said, uh, you will use it, people, I do. Who's that? That's uh, Ham McGraw. Oh, yeah. Hi, Holly, I'm glad you are able to tune in live today. Um, all right. So now we're going to go ahead and start cooking these crepes. So we're going to walk over here to the stove. This is why I have a helper today. So now I'm going to heat up my skillet right here. I should have preheated it earlier. But what I have here is the skillet. Just a small little skillet. You can also get um, a crepe pan, which are big, round, flat pans. And then you can get like this wooden spoon that you can... Um, swipe around to level them all out but I just use a small little six inch skillet and make sure it's non-stick that way it'll it'll help you out and while that's preheating I have some extra melted butter here that you're going to need and I'm going to end up just mixing it back up because those milk solids kind of separated a little bit so this is some melted butter and while this is heating we want to get that nice and hot yep that's hot <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do is, I think I've got a ladle here, yep, got a little ladle, and so we're just going to brush this with butter, with some of our melted butter, around up the sides, and set that down, and then we're going to take a spoonful of our batter, and we're going to put it right in here, and then we're going to swirl our, our pan around like this. So we're just going to swirl, swirl, swirl until this coats all the way around the sides. And these are gonna take about two and a half minutes to cook each crepe. It's gonna take about 90 seconds on the first side and then about another one minute uh, after we flip it on the other side. So we're just gonna cook this over kind of medium high heat 
until it's browned, um, lightly golden browned on that one side. And so while that's cooking, I'll let you know I have my oven. You can, I've got my oven preheated to 375 degrees um, for our fluted crepe cuts that, we're, well, that we are going to do here in a little bit. And I'm probably just gonna make four of these right now and show you how we do this. And then, just to save time, and then Alyssa will help me later make more. Mm -hmm. Alright, and so so you can see once it starts to get cooked, you can kind of swirl it around and it's not sticking anymore. And so we're just going to let that cook for a few more seconds until it gets a little golden on the bottom. If you try to do it too soon, you're going to tear your crepe. So we're just going to let that sit there. And then I'm just going to check it underneath and you can kind of look close and see how that is. It's not quite, quite browned at all yet. And I will tell you that you can make these crepes ahead of time. I actually have some crepes over here that I made a few days ago when I needed to make these for the picture. I got about 11 crepes out of the batch. Um, you'll get anywhere between eight to 10 is average. I got 11 out of them, just depends how thin you make them. All right, so this is looking like it might be golden. So I'm now just gonna flip it. You can see that it's not terribly golden, but just a little golden. And we're just gonna keep moving that around a little bit or else it's gonna form bubbles inside and not cook on that in those spots. So we'll just rotate these, but you can make them ahead of time. Just go ahead and stack them up, wrap them in some plastic wrap, put them in a Ziploc bag, a zip top bag, and then put them in the freezer or the refrigerator. And then before you use them again, you just wanna bring them to room temperature before we use them again the next time, which is what I've done from the ones that I made earlier. So I'm just gonna make four of these for the Herb Dasiago eggs, and then I'm gonna use some of the extra ones for some dessert crepes that we're gonna make. So then you just wanna take it and flip it out, and you can see how pretty that is. Can you show them that crepe, Alyssa? Mm -hmm. See how pretty that looks? All right, so now we're just gonna continue doing this with all of our crepe batter. It'll take about a half an hour to do all of these crepes. So you can see our butter's getting a little warmer. I think I could have had my pan a little hotter when I started the last bat, last one. We're just gonna take this, put that in there, and swirl that around. It's okay if your butter's a little brown, as long as it's not burnt. Brown butter's okay, burnt butter is not. Swirl that around until all of your batter doesn't move anymore and it all starts to set, okay? So these are just little thin pancakes, really. I used to make these for my kids, and so you can see right when you first do it, you can not they won't slide around, but as they start to set and get cooked, then they'll start to lift up a little bit. And so, so yeah, you can make these ahead of time. So some of the other things that we're gonna be doing today with some of these, there's so many different things that you can do with these. You can put little layers of frosting in between or cream in between these and I'll do a whole bunch of layers and then you can actually make a cake out of it and then frost it with some ganache or anything. Um, you can just um, top them with some jam and when you serve these, I'll show you a couple of different ways to serve them. You can leave, either leave them flat like this, you can fold them into quarters. We're gonna make fruit, fruit cups out of them or fluted crepes out of the, fluted cups out of these here in a little bit and that's looking great. So you can see what diff the difference is when your pan is hotter, they'll brown a lot faster. Anybody have any questions about any of this so far? Nope, not yet, okay, great. So they're pretty easy, just little thin pancakes. When I was, my kids were little, we used to make these and I'd put jam in them and then we would roll them up and we used to call them Swedish pan, and sprinkle powdered sugar on them, call them Swedish pancakes. I'm not sure where that came from. I think that was just a recipe that I saw the very first time I ever made crepes. All right, so there's two. I'm just gonna make two more here, and then I'm gonna assemble the Asiago eggs, and then while those are baking, we'll make chocolate crepes and some other dessert crepes to fill our time while these are cooking. All right, so here's another one. You just get that in there. And as I mentioned, these will make anywhere between, depending on how big your pan is, anywhere between eight to 12 crepes. I got 11 out of the last batch um, for the size of this pan. If you're making the big ones on a regular crepe pan, it's about the size of this plate, then you can probably get eight. 
All right, so got a couple there. And any questions? All right, so I'll give you a little prelude on what we're gonna be making next week. So next week, we're gonna be making one of my favorite things. I guess I have a lot of favorite things, don't I? I think every week I make something that's kind of a favorite or my hubby's favorite. Um, Alyssa, what's one of your favorite things that I make? I like pretty much everything you make. You make amazing things, Nanny. When we had the bed and breakfast, Alyssa would come over and help me um, do all of our breakfast prep and serve. And, and as the bonus, she got to eat whatever I was cooking. Um, but next week, we're going to be making pie crust and pies. And so, or at least one kind of pie. And so, but I love pies. And so pie crust can be a little bit finicky. And so next week, I'm going to show you how to make a fantastic homemade pie crust. And, and then I'll make a pie. Any suggestions on what anybody, what type of pie people might want? I was thinking about making an apple pie or French silk pie. I could always do both. My new favorite pie that I just made a few weeks ago for the first time, and I actually just made it again a couple days ago, is strawberry rhubarb. I have just fallen in love with homemade strawberry rhubarb pie. All right, so let's see. What does this make our third? Yep. Okay, so one more. So you can see they really don't take too long. My pan doesn't like to stay flat unless I have some weight in it. All right. Okay, so there's a, this will be our fourth one. And then once I'm done with these, we're going to go and assemble four of these. And I'll bake four of them now. Then I'll bake some more a little later after the video's over. Alyssa can help me. <laughs> She'll get to eat some, take some home to her family. Her mom has already told me she wants some. It's pretty lucky that they live right next door. You've had two suggestions, either okay. yes, strawberry rhubarb, or peach pie. Peach pie. Mmm. Peach season will be coming into effect here about the end of August. I get so excited when <laughs> peach season comes because I get them by the bushel loads. And I make all kinds of stuff out of peaches. And so maybe I'll make a peach pie um, when I get fresh peaches in later this year. But I'll make mango peach salsa, I'll make peach cobbler, I will do a lot of canning. I love peaches. Yes, peach pie would be delicious. I don't think I've ever actually made a peach pie. I've made lots of peach cobblers, um, but I haven't actually made a peach pie. You've had two votes for strawberry rhubarb. Two votes for strawberry rhubarb. Yes. Okay, if I can get some strawberry rhubarb at the store, because it's kind of seasonal. The last couple times that I've went to the store, they've only had like two or three pieces of rhubarb. There used to be some growing wild in our neighborhood, but I haven't seen it in a while. Maybe that's something I should plant outside. That way I'll have it. I think I had strawberry rhubarb pie one time several years ago at like just a, just a restaurant. I can't remember if it was like Village Inn or Denny's or somewhere. I can't remember. It was many years ago and it was just okay. But I saw rhubarb at the store recently and strawberries and we were having some company here. And so I decided I'm gonna try it. And so I went on the hunt for a recipe and found one that I really loved. So. Another suggestion is mango pie. Mango? I have never had mango pie. Hmm, have you had mango pie before? Aunt Linda, Aunt Linda Ness, Ness oh, has. Oh, Linda. Yes. Have you had mango pie before, Linda? Hey. All right, so I've got four of these. So we're gonna move on over and we are going to assemble our fluted crepe cups. All right, so I'm just gonna take this muffin pan and I've already sprayed it with olive oil. I probably shouldn't have sprayed all of them since I'm just doing four. But what we're gonna do to assemble is I have our crepes. This is some Asiago cheese. I have eight tablespoons of Asiago cheese, mm -hmm. and this is gonna make eight crepes. So what I'm doing right now, this is gonna make eight fluted crepe cups, but I'm just gonna make four right now. So we've got our cheese. I have four teaspoons of dried Italian seasoning that we are going to add to that cheese. And let me mix that up. So we got so we're missing up our Asiago cheese. Now I grated this on the smallest cheese grater that I have on my grater, the smallest section. So it's kind of like um, 
Parmesan cheese when you get it in the, the can, so it's shredded really finely. You can also get this as a cream. I've gotten creamed Asiago cheese in the tub before. Whoops, that's my little cheat board there that has all my ingredients on them. Okay, so there's that. And then also to this, um, we're gonna have eight eggs. Now here's a little tip about our eggs, and I wanted to show you this here. Um, so when I do my eggs, I'm gonna crack my eggs one at a time into a bowl, because if I break an egg into my crepe cups, it's not gonna cook well. You'll just have kind of like a, a hard yolk. And the thing that I like so much about these is you end up with kind of a, a runny yolk. But if you don't like your eggs runny, you don't have to do them that, just cook them a little longer. So I'm gonna cook these for about 13 minutes in the oven at 375 degrees. So you wanna carefully put these in here and try not to break them. I actually did just break that one. What happens if you break it is it's just gonna make, um, some of your egg might leak out. So right now we're gonna do four of these. So you just wanna carefully try to put those in there and they're gonna look so pretty with, when they get all fluted up when you go to serve them. And I broke this one too in a couple of places. I think I need to slow down and not be in such a hurry. <laughs> so, but you can see that I am not perfect. All right, it a works a little better if you try to flute it up a little bit before you press it down in there. So now you can see that you have all this extra room down in the bottom. So just carefully do that. And now we are going to divide this cheese and seasoning into all of these. I'm just gonna do half of it because I'm only doing four. I would make these at the bed and breakfast inn and they would, they would go over pretty well. Sometimes people don't like their eggs on the runny side. They like them set pretty well. So then we're gonna put in an egg. Just drop that in there. Okay, and I'm gonna continue with these other three. Trying not to break any of those yolks. Okay, and then we're gonna plop that in there too. And some of these that I have cracked, we might lose some of that white, egg white, but we shall see. Sometimes that cheese kind of helps prevent that. So we'll see what happens when they're done, but I'm gonna put these in the oven and let them cook. Instead of cooking them ahead of time today, I'm cooking them fully right now in the oven. I don't have any made ahead of time today. But we're gonna be making other things while these are cooking. And these are gonna take about 13 minutes to cook. All right, so I'll let those cook. And now, well, there's a couple more things we're gonna put on there before we put them in the oven. I'm gonna grab some cream from my refrigerator. And you can see all this artwork on my refrigerator is from my grandkids. They like to paint pretty, draw pretty pictures. Crazy boy Gabe, he likes baseball. They all like, they all like these. So I'm gonna grab some cream here. So this is just some heavy whipping cream. So this is just some heavy whipping cream that we're gonna put in here. And we're just gonna pour about a teaspoon on each yolk. I like to go slow so I don't get too much. There we go. And this is gonna keep those yolks from drying out in the, in, while they're baking. Okay. All right, and now I'm just gonna sprinkle them with just a little bit of salt and pepper. This is some coarse kosher salt that I'm using here. I'm gonna pop that yolk, or that little bubble. Okay, I'll have to get a little fork. But sometimes they'll cook that way. They'll cook bubbled up like that and you'll end up with an air bubble. Okay, and then this is just a little bit of coarse ground pepper. Okay, now if you don't like um, the cheese, you can also just put some ham in there or just the eggs. You can be really flexible and versatile. Okay, pop, let me grab a fork. I'm gonna pop that little air bubble, okay? Now we're gonna put these in the oven 
Let me see if I can't flute this one a little more. Just kind of fiddle with those as much as you want. That's okay. They're going to be yummy. And now these are going to cook, like I said, about 13 minutes. If you like your eggs more well done and don't want any of your yolk runny, just cook them longer. Now you also want to make sure that you have a good oven thermometer and you know the temperature of your oven. My oven, I set it for 375, but my oven cooks about 15 degrees hotter. So I am going to cancel it and then I'm going to turn it on again and lower, lower it to 360 and so but I like to make it hotter at first because every time you open up your oven excuse me it's going to drop your temperature by about um, 25 degrees mm -hmm. and so now I'm going to set my timer for 13 minutes all right I made these the other day so that's how I know they take 13 minutes all right so now while those are cooking I'm going to make some of these other dessert crepes. Let me put this cream away into my nicely decorated refrigerator. <laughs> All right, so I got <clears throat> some egg stuff here. All right, and then move that plate out of the way. Or actually, we're probably going to need this. All right, so now the next crepe that I'm going to make now is for one of our dessert crepes. Is I am going to take some of these crepes as I mentioned before that I have some already made. So I just put these in, I wrapped them up in some plastic wrap and then I put them in a Ziploc bag and covered them up with some saran wrap there. All right, so you can see I've got some of these. So this one, we are going to make a chocolate hazelnut banana. Um, oh, and you should have seen Alyssa's face right now. Great. Okay, so I've got this wonderful, delicious, Nutella here, that chocolate hazelnut spread, which is so, so good. And I'm just going to take a little spreader and I'm going to spread some of these on, some of this. My grandkids like even um, peanut butter and Nutella sandwiches. Throw some bananas in there, make it a little healthier. <laughs> so we're just spreading a little bit of this Nutella on here. I have discovered that I really like Nutella on my s'mores. Mm. On those graham crackers, instead of melting, as getting those little pieces of chocolate, you can just spread it, spread your graham crackers with Nutella. So good. All right, so we've got some of that on there. And then I'm going to take this banana, and I'm gonna slice this up a little bit here. Slice up a little banana. And just put some slices of banana on there. Let's see, I might need a few more. <laughs> what do you think, Alyssa? I remember these when you made them for the bed and breakfast. Mm -hmm. They were good, huh? Mm -hmm. All right, so actually we're just going to do this on about half of it because we're going to flip it over. So there are the bananas. Someone suggested that you should deep fry it. Oh, I deep fried this? The crepe? Yeah. Mm, if I rolled it up, that mm -hmm. might be pretty darn good. I do have a recipe that I deep fry. It was a humongous hit, and this one I kind of created a little bit. Um, found a basic recipe and then changed it up a little bit. But I will take um, um, egg roll wraps, and I'll put a ripe banana in there, part of a ripe banana, drizzle it with some caramel sauce, and I chop up some score bars or heath bars and put that in there. Then roll it all up and then deep fry that. Sprinkle it with some powdered sugar and some caramel and Chinese five spice. And that's pretty darn good. All right, so there's that crepe right here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, just because this is probably not enough, we're going to make it even better. This is a cream that I made that we are gonna be using for several of these crepes today. This is a Grand Marnier cream. The recipe for this cream is also in my cookbook. So you can find this there. So I'm going to top this with a little bit of this cream. Mm. Then I am going to take some chocolate, 
Thank you, Alyssa. So I've got a little chocolate bar here. So I'm gonna take this chocolate out of here. Nanny, that's not little. This is not little, okay, yeah. No, she says this is not little. No, this is not a little chocolate bar. And we're gonna make some little chocolate girls, okay? And so there's some little chocolate that we're just gonna shred up on there. All right, and then we can always just add a couple more bananas on top just for presentation set purposes there. Slice that all up. Nanny has to make them fancy. Yes, everything I do, I make it a little fancy. Alyssa noticed that when we were doing the B&B. &B. Everything. everything had to be fancy. All right, presentation means a lot. And then we're gonna sprinkle it with a little bit of hazelnuts, chopped up hazelnuts. And I'll tell you a little bit of something about nuts. To keep your nuts fresh, Keep them in the refrigerator or the freezer and they will stay fresher longer. Okay, this doesn't necessarily look the prettiest on this plate, but we can even just go one more step further because we can, right? And just, there we go. Like I said, presentation, right? Okay, so there you have it. There is a chocolate banana crepe. We'll move that one aside. Alyssa's gonna to get to dig into that one here in a little bit. All right, and so next I am going to make, I'll get a smaller plate this time. Okay, so this one's going to be a berry crepe and I'm gonna show you a different way of folding this crepe. Now, as I mentioned, you could take these crepes, you can see I have several of them stacked up here. You can take in between each and every one, you can put frosting, like you could take Nutella and frost it more do another layer, frost it, layer, frost it. And then when you get all done, I would make a couple of dozen of these. When you get all done, you can just pour some ganache over there and then you have a crepe cake. Do we have any comments, Alyssa? Um, someone said yum. And okay. then another person said, oh my gosh, that looks so amazing. <laughs> all right, so this one, I'm just going to keep it simple. Take some raspberry jam here. And we're just gonna spread this with a little bit that's not quite a little bit. <laughs> That's a little more than a little bit <laughs> of raspberry jam. And these were the kind that uh, we used to call Swedish pancakes when my kids were growing up. Now you can take these and you can fold these in half and then in quarters. And so that's kind of another traditional way of serving your crepes like this. And then you can top them with some fresh berries I've got some raspberries, and here's another tip I wanted to share with y'all. Um, these berries, I, I've already washed them, but what I do is I will actually take my berries, blueberries and raspberries, and I'll rinse them in, I'll rinse them in vinegar water. So I'll just take a little bowl when I get them back from the store, and I'll put them in white vin a bowl with white vinegar and water in them, and let them soak for about five, 10 minutes and then drain them, but don't rinse them. And it'll keep them fresher longer. And then I put them back in their own container, but I put a little bit of paper towel down on the bottom. So I've done that with my raspberries and also my blueberries. I don't do it with my strawberries because it kind of dries those out a little bit. Okay, so there we go. There are some Swedish pancakes as my as we used to call them when my kids were growing up. Or I'd roll them up. And then if you want to make them a little fancier, I've got some herbs in here that I just um, picked. Um, picked from my garden. You can wrap them in a little bit of wet paper towel and they'll stay fresher. Okay, so I'll set those aside. So here are some Swedish pancakes with raspberry jam. All right. So version two. All right, so now we're gonna go back over here and we're gonna make these chocolate, chocolate crepes. Okay, now I've got another bowl here, so I'll show you how we do the chocolate crepes. Let me move some of this other stuff out of the way. Okay, let me cover this back up so it doesn't get all dried out. I'll just put them right back here in this bag. So there's two kinds of crepes that we've done so far. Actually, three. We've got two dessert crepes, and we've got our eggs in the oven. I'm going to actually bring Alyssa over, and then we're going to peek on those because I want to give you a little um, comment about those crepes. If you happen to notice, 
if the tops of your crepes are getting too brown on the top, you can just put a piece of aluminum foil on there. My oven, actually, they look darker than they really are. So I'm just gonna let that go another minute. While that's heating up, I'm gonna heat this back up and I'm gonna grab a piece of foil, just in case those do while I'm making these chocolate crepes. So now I've got a piece of foil ready for when those get a little too brown for my liking so they don't continue cooking. Mm. Okay, so our chocolate batter now. So for our chocolate ones, let me turn my little ingredient board around there. So I've got two eggs here that are gonna go in our bowl. And I've got two cups of milk now. I want to mention this is actually almond milk. You can substitute almond milk for regular milk in anything that you bake. But I was running short on, on milk. My husband needs it for his coffee, so I don't want to deprive him of milk in his coffee. So I, I drink almond milk just because I'm lactose intolerant, so I have swapped this out with almond milk. And I cook with almond milk in a lot of my baking sometimes when I don't have regular milk. I don't have enough. All right, and then move this over. Okay, so now I'm gonna beat these up and we're gonna do them pretty much the same way that we did the regular crepes. So we've got our milk and our eggs. And I've got to find my other whisk. Okay, there's my other whisk. Okay, so now <laughs> we're gonna whisk these up. Anybody have any questions about anything that we're doing so far? Okay. So in here, I have my milk and butter that has melted and cooled maybe a little too much, so I'm gonna pop it back in the microwave for just a couple seconds. Turn this pan down so it doesn't get too hot. All right, and let me see how those crepes are doing. I'm gonna open that oven up. I don't necessarily like to open the oven up while things are cooking, but I don't want my crepes to get too dark. So you can kind of see how they're coming along. And now I'm going to, you have to multitask around here. You can see how they're doing. So they're pretty, they're getting there. They're a little runny. I'm actually going to rotate this around just a little bit. And let me see how much longer I have on my timer. Just it says one minute. So what's going to happen too, is these are going to continue to cook after you pull them out of the oven. Sorry, I'm making noise here. I guess for one minute, I might as well just leave it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be flexible, right? <laughs> yep, let's be flexible about everything around here. Okay, so it's got another minute. This butter is done. Whoops, did I get you? No. All right, and I'm gonna, oh, I look like I splattered. Okay, <laughs> I have more mess to clean up. All right, okay. So we're coming back over here with our melted butter. All right, so our milk and our eggs are good. So now we're going to add, this is um, a third of a cup of sugar. So I'm gonna add this to our egg mixture here. One third of a cup of sugar. Now in here, I'm going to add two cups of flour into my sifter. And then I'm also gonna add a third of a cup of cocoa powder, unsweetened cocoa powder. So we're gonna add that to the sifter as well. And now we're gonna sift these up. There's the timer. Those eggs should be done. We're pretty close to it. But as I mentioned, they'll keep cooking. So let's go check those. Okay, so I think they are done. Let's see. You can jiggle them a little bit. And so depending on how wet you like your yolks, now those herbs popped up over the side of the eggs. So this white looks like it's not quite done yet. So I'm gonna put those back in there for just one more minute and let those cook a little longer. And I've had that oven open, so I'm gonna reset my temperature. My oven doesn't really reheat on its own. There's issues. So I'm gonna set my timer for one minute and then those should be good to go. All right. So we're gonna finish sifting these. So 
So this is just that two cups of flour and a third of a cup of cocoa powder. All right, and now we are going to add this. And, and actually, there's also um, a half a teaspoon of salt right here that I'm gonna add to that. And now we're gonna slowly add this as well. If I go fast with this stuff, it's just gonna go poof. Alyssa has experienced poofs and explosions with me before. Sometimes she can tell you the story about the whipped cream explosion <laughs> during the bed and breakfast days. And now we've got our butter, which we're also just gonna drizzle this butter in as well. This is three tablespoons of butter. So we had one tablespoon of butter in our regular, in our regular crepes. These chocolate crepes have three tablespoons. And that timer's going, so we're gonna go get those other eggs out. Okay. Let's see if they have set more. Yes, they have. I think they're good. I think some of these might be a little more and some of them might be a little less, so we shall see. But don't those look delicious? Delicious. All right, so now we're gonna bring them over here and plate them up. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, this one looks like it might still be need to cook a little longer, but all you have to do is just leave it in there for a little longer and it will continue to cook. So if you like your eggs less done, so now they should sneak out pretty easily unless the eggs have broken inside. If they've broken inside, you might have to get a little spatula to get them out, which I'm gonna get. Of course, when I made these the other day, they came out perfectly. But today, that's because I'm filming, they don't want to. <laughs> so I can see that some of the yolks may have um, broken through some of those holes that I had in those crepes. So that's why you wanna to try to be careful about. Um, are, the, are the crepes still soft or are they crispy? They are crispy around the edges and soft on the insides. So you can kind of see, I'll show you once I get one out. So I don't want to just tear it apart. So when I made these the other day, they just slid right out. I just picked them up and out they came. Today, not so much. And those whites look like they could use a little longer too. But so you can see they're really soft right here. And this part are nice and crispy. All right, so we have our eggs and fluted crepe cups here. You can see how pretty they look, and then we're gonna cut into one so you can see what happens when we cut into one. All right. And these whites are a little bit on the less done side on this one. This one looks like that one's probably a little more, but my herbs and cheese popped up on that one. So, mm -hmm. And I like to serve these with a little bit of Canadian bacon and rosemary garlic potatoes to go along with them. And then you can also garnish them and make them a little prettier. Where did you buy that spatula, Nanny? What type of material this is spatula, it? This spatula, I have had this spatula probably for 30 plus years. It's silicone. Um, I don't remember where I got it. It's been, I've had it forever, probably just Walmart or Target or somewhere like that. I haven't been able to find any more since then though. And so this is just a little cherry tomato that we're gonna plop on here. And I do have a little sprig of rosemary. I just grabbed one, but you can get a little sprig of rosemary and a little cherry tomato. And now you have a really pretty dish right there. This is a little bit of cilantro. You can use parsley. Whatever, happen, whatever you happen to have, just to garnish it up and make it a little pretty. All right, so that one still looks like it's a little wet, but I'm gonna let it sit longer. But I'm gonna cut into this one so you can see what happens here. So what we're gonna do is when it's time to serve, now like I said, if, they're, if you want them more set and you don't want your yolk um, or your white runny, just cook them in there longer. So but what I like to do, but then you run into the you can see how that there's a little bit of oozing from that yolk and they're just delicious. And there's some of the cheese that's down there melted and they're pretty darn good. What do you think? Not too bad, you can all do this, right? 
All right, I'm gonna set those aside and we're gonna move on to our chocolate crates. I know I probably bit off a lot more today than what we normally do on here, but <laughs> that's okay, why not? Everything right? with crepes today. Yes. All right, so same thing with this batter. You're gonna to wanna to let it sit for an hour once it's done. So that's our chocolate batter, but I already have some done. So I'm gonna grab another spatula, or I mean another spoon, and we're gonna go over here and cook some chocolate once the exact same way. And then with these, we are gonna make You some want to move black... the other batter. What's that? Yeah. We are going to make black forest crepes with these today. Chocolate and cherries. All right, oh, and our butter. I had to re-soften that butter up a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna just brush our pan with butter the same way. I'll probably just make one of these while you're watching just for time's sake. And then, all right, what did I do with that spoon? <laughs> did it fall in? <laughs> oh no, it's over here. <laughs> I would not have been surprised if it had just fallen in. So you wanna let your batter sit in the fridge for about an hour, okay? So we're gonna put this in there and just do the exact same thing. Spread it around by twirling your pan. If your pan's not hot enough, that's what this is from. from. So I'm just gonna keep twirling. All right, maybe I'll make two. <laughs> <laughs> but yep, so we're gonna make some black forest crepes with these today. But these are also good just by filling them with jam also. So the same thing with these, they take about 90 seconds to cook on the one side and about one minute on the second side. And you'll know when they're done because the chocolate will be set. All right, so how's everybody doing today? Any other questions for, from y'all? Don't forget to like this video, share this video, put any comments that you want in there. And you can find the regular crepe recipe and the egg recipe in my cookbook, Rocky Mountain Lodge and Cabins, More Favorite Recipes. Go to our website at RockyMountainLodge.com. Click on the gift shop tab and enter Facebook cooking and you can save $5 off that, coupon, that uh, cookbook. And um, this cream that I made is also in there, the Grand Marnier cream, which is pretty delicious. We're going to use it for these. All right, and so these are getting there. You can see how they darken as they're cooking. So our batter was pretty light at first and then it's gonna get darker as it cooks. Let me grab that spatula. I know I love this spatula. If anything ever happens to the spatula, I'll be very sad because I've had it for so long. You can also kind of feel them to see if they're drying. And then you just flip these over the same way. You can't really tell on these though if they're <laughs> browning because the batter's brown. But chocolate crepes are pretty darn good. You can even top them with some ice cream when they're warm. Vanilla ice cream, drizzle it with any kind of um, chocolate sauce, strawberry sauce, caramel sauce. They're pretty good. All right. So I'm, like I said, I'm just gonna cook the one right now and then Alyssa and I will come back and cook all the rest when we are done. So now we're gonna come over here. And it's probably better if these cool a little bit because I don't want that cream to melt. So I have, this here is just canned cherry pie filling. I have this left over from when we went camping last week. Alyssa was there, but we do these things called pudgy pies. Does anybody know what pudgy pies are? Any takers? Nobody knows what a pudgy pie is? Oh my goodness. You guys. <laughs> I might have to do a whole segment just on pudgy pies. <laughs> they are camp sandwiches. You get these little square cast iron um, little... Um, things I can't talk all of a sudden anyway they're this little square cast iron um, sandwich makers and then there's two of them and they're on long handles and you put um, a piece of bread on there and then you put pie filling in there and then you mm -hmm. put them in your campfire and you cook them 
You can make pizzas out of them. You can make pork sandwiches. You can make egg sandwiches. We like to do do them for dessert a lot. They're pretty darn good, don't you think? Uh -huh. What kind did you have this last I had I apple, had but that's the only type of jelly I like. Apple, yeah. So you, or apple. pie filling or anything. I brought cherry pie filling with me. Elderberry. And apple pie filling. And then I made elderberry pie filling. So these we're just going to go ahead and put... Um, some cherry pie filling on here just because I have this leftover. Good way to use it. Just make some crepes. Use any leftover um, pie filling that you might have. I can't believe you guys don't know what pudgy pars are. And then we're going to take some cream <coughs> and put that on there. And we'll fold that over. And then we're going to top it with some more cherries and cream. And now we have Black Forest. A question on pudgy pie. So maybe, yes. so maybe in the fire pit is that? That's what yes, someone asked. Yes, you can do them in the fire pit. You can even do them over the stove if you want to. But yes, you can do them over the fire pit. And then our chocolate. You can also also grate some more of that chocolate on here. And this is just a potato peeler that we're just using to grate this chocolate on top. I'm trying to find the end right, I already right used. Right here. That's the end I use. Okay. All right. And there is our Black Forest crepes. All right. And that's it for today. As I mentioned, you can find all of these recipes on our website. Actually, not the chocolate crepe one, but that will be on my, web that will be on my website soon. Otherwise, you can find the eggs and the regular crepe recipe in my cookbook, Rocky Mountain Lodge and Cabin's More Favorite Recipes. And visit our website, RockyMountainLodge.com. And um, you can order that cook these cookbooks from the gift the cookbook from the gift shop. So share this video and make any comments you'd like. Any questions? No. no. Otherwise, all right. Otherwise, I will be back next week and we will make pies with homemade pie crust. All right. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, and I'll see you next week. Say thanks to Alyssa. Bye. Fish.